It was midnight on all hallows e'en when I awoke with a fright, unaware of what had roused me on that dark, evil night. From the study I could hear a curious din, so I slipped downstairs and silently crept in. There, at the piano, sat a tight-faced beast with eyebrows raised too far, and he sang that hideous song that went, na, 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 na. I knew then that the beast would not be stopped, even as I dropped the piano lid and felt the crunch and crack of bone. He continued on with his hideous drone. Behind him, I spied a silver candlestick. I grabbed it quick and with an almighty swing brought the murderous thing down on the beast's head. Oh, I can still hear the sickening crack. But the beast just spluttered and came straight back. Na, 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 na. Desperate, I ran out to the shed and grabbed my axe. This, I thought, will stop the beast in his tracks. I brought it down once, then twice, and took his hands clean off. But the beast just gave a little cough and continued to play. Oh, how those bloody wrists did spray the ebony and ivory. Live together in perfect harmony, side by side on my piano keyboard. Oh, Lord, why could I not make him stop? I went out to the shed once more, this time grabbed my muckle chain saw. Stop, I screamed, or I'll remove your entire head. But the beast just smiled and played Mull of Kintyre instead. I swear as I brought that saw across his evil throat, his head hit the floor and it did not miss a note. Na, 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 na. I ran out to the shed one last time and then returned to the scene of my crime, this time with petrol, which I doused over the singing torso, waited ten seconds or so, and then set him alight. He went off with an almighty bang, but still the creature sang. Then suddenly... He stood, and with some difficulty due to the aforementioned lack of hands, picked up his severed head, and out into the black of night he fled. A singing, running funeral pyre, now he was back on Mull of Kintyre. But far he did not travel, and much he did not see, because he was mown down by a car outside number 23. He landed with a sickening thud in a pool of rancid zombie blood. Is this it, I thought? Has the beast been killed by the neighbor's car? No, 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 no. He peeled himself up from the tarmac. I screamed, stop! You've gone too far, Mac. As I plunged my fist into his smouldering chest, the beast remained quite calm, even as I pulled out his wizened heart and felt its beat on my palm. Dum, 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 dum. I knew then what had to be done as I placed the pulsing mass upon my tongue. The next morning, I awoke, feeling quite out of sorts, with recurring thoughts of a hideous dream, a fire, an axe, a blood-curdling scream. But there were no signs of a fight having taken place the previous night. Did it really happen? I have no answer so far, apart from a voice deep inside which still sings na 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 na